Oh my gosh, it's time for tech and game news. <gasps> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Roby Tech, and this is the news for this week. The first news, by the way, that's amazing. Anyway, welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Justin Roby, and we're here to talk about tech news and game news and all the other news. No, that's not true, it's just normal news. Anyway, on to things. I don't know if you knew this, if you've been living under a rock, but Microsoft just held its Surface event in New York City on the 2nd and announced all sorts of new awesome tech. Now, while there were seven announced, several announcements, several announcements that were expected, there were a few that no one, and I do mean no one, including Jez Corden over at Windows Central, saw coming. That's right, I called you out, Jez. Number one, Microsoft started the announcement on the Surface Laptop 3. Sure, sure, sure. It's got a 20% larger trackpad. There's a 13 and a half inch or a 15 inch model. It's got a removable drive. But the cool thing is, check this out. And I had to like swallow because I was so excited to talk about this. It's got a redesigned surfaceable chassis. Brian, do you know what a serviceable chassis is? No. no. Oh, well, okay. Well, anyway, for those of you who don't know, that means that they could easily take off the top of the laptop and fix anything inside of it. Now, Panos actually did this on stage. Now, he did warn people, please don't do this at home. And that means you Galaxy Fold users, you know who I'm talking about, don't try to peel apart your laptop. Anyway, Surface Laptop 13.5 comes with a special Intel 10th Gen Ice Lake quad-core CPU. The 15-inch model comes with a wicked fast bespoke AMD Ryzen Surface Edition CPU, and that's AMD's fastest mobile processor ever. Now, here's the deal. If you take that Intel laptop and that AMT laptop and you put them across from each other, they'll actually fight. That part's not true. Don't go buy them and see if that actually happens. I just wanted to really kind of hype things up. Intel AMD in the corner on Surface. Anyway, next up, we have the Surface Pro 7. After six generations of Surface Pros, there's been six generation. Microsoft has made more refinements rather than overhauling the device completely. Uh, focused on power, performance, and user experiences, Microsoft has added USB-C to the Surface Pro. Yay, finally, Microsoft, we got USB-C. It only took three years, but appreciate it. Uh, let's see, they've also updated the type cover with a fancy hidden slot for the new Surface Slim Pen that satisfyingly pops out from the cover and then hidden away so you don't lose it because let's be honest, the first thing you lose is the pen. I've lost like five of them and that's like 89 bucks. Wait, Brian, if we get like, if I go look in my couch cushion, I might find like five Surface Pens and then we can get you those lights you want. That's like $500. That's like the best thing ever. I might just go Oh wait, I should probably finish the news first, hold on. Okay, let's see, if you are an Android user, you can link your phone to your Surface Pro 7 and reject phone calls from your parents asking if you wanna come over for dinner for the third time this week. Josh, this isn't funny. You know that my parents never call me and never invite me to dinner. So this was obviously written by you. I don't get invited to dinner, ever. Please stop writing about your parents and telling me how wonderful your life is while I'm still waiting for my parents to call. Mom. Dead. Everybody has ears, right? Well, Microsoft has decided to throw their hat into the earbud game with the Surface earbuds. These are an interesting product because with a high price tag of $249, it is significantly higher than Apple's earpods and uh, Apple's AirPods. That's AirPods, not earpods, Brian, uh, Josh. And Brian, stop laughing. And Samsung Buds. Now let's look at the specs and see why the cost may be justified. Let's see, it has two microphones with filters for noise reduction. It works on all platforms since they're Bluetooth, and they do not have noise canceling features by design. Actually, I think this is a good thing because I've seen a lot of people have noise canceling on their earbuds and then they're like walking around and they don't even hear that car that suddenly hits them. Hey, Brian, do you know if anybody's actually been killed due to earbuds? My or... dad lost his leg. Wait, what? <laughs> That's, is that real? Your dad lost his leg? I mean, that sounds like an amazing, like, you know how they have like the MacBook thing that's going on for like Microsoft's like, uh, Microsoft Surface earbuds. Uh, you're not gonna lose any lives because we have no, no noise canceling. That's actually a mouthful. That's a terrible idea. Let's not do that. Microsoft, don't listen to me. Um, let's see what else they got in here. Uh, let's see, it costs a lot. Uh, it's got touch capability, making it worth the price of admission to you. Let us know. Personally, I think the touch feature will be a really nice uh, when you're working on out or you don't wanna take your phone out and change a song. You just basically touch, change volume, which is pretty cool. Now let's talk about the meat and potatoes of the Surface event. And this is the stuff that was super exciting. Uh, they revealed their Surface Pro X, and I think, X was like two years ago with like the Xbox X and then the 
iPhone X, so I guess we're just now getting on that bag wagon. Anyway, uh, this was a bespoke XQ1 processor that with built-in AI features. It's super light, weighing in at 1.68 pounds, comes with a Surface Slim pen and storage. Breaking out the flops again, Microsoft claims it has two teraflops of graphical processing so you can calculate all your floating points. I don't know a single floating point, so I don't know how to calculate any of those things. The screen ratio is 2880 by 1920 with a pixel density of 2.6, 267 PPI and a 1401 contrast ratio. Brian, does that mean anything to you? Not a whole lot. Okay, sounds awesome. It's got a standard mobile processor that when Microsoft used in the past ran with two watts of power and one that runs with seven watts. So more power, I guess. Uh, it says, along with the Pro X, Adobe came on stage and announced the Creative Cloud for Surface and demoed their newest product to hit the Surface lineup, Adobe Fresco. I like Fresca, but that's not like this at all. It rolls off the tongue though, Adobe Fresco. Like I like saying that. I wonder if we can get a sponsor sponsorship for Adobe Fresco. Anyway, it's a realistic painting program that simulates real surfaces. See what I did there? Real surfaces and pencils, pens and brushes. Now these last two products are the ones that most people are talking about right now. First up is the Surface Neo. And yes, you can make all the matrix jokes and memes in the comments below. It knows Kung Fu. The Surface Neo does. Microsoft is changing up the foldable device market. Look out, Samsung, because not with a flexible screen, but with a dual screen device that looks sick AF. And if you don't know what AF means, kids, go ask your parents, because I'm not gonna be able to tell you, because I wanna make sure that everybody can watch the show. Using an Intel processor, and that's about all we know at this, stand this standpoint, is that it two separate screens connected by a hinge that lets, lets you fold the device 360 degree and connects each screens with 60 coax cables that are thinner than a strand of human hair. Not your hair, Brian, your, your hair is super thick, like triple C thick, it's so nice and fluffy. Uh, anyway, uh, it weighs at 655 grams. It's 5.6 millimeters thicker thin, however you want to look at it. But how does it work when you use the device? Well, here's the deal. The new Windows 10 XOS is optimized for dual screen, allowing you to use one app across both screen, run two different apps at the same time, or separately screens or flip up its magnetic keyboard and change things up entirely. Look, here's the deal. I'm gonna put the link in the description down below for the actual video for this. And I know it's kind of playing up here somewhere. Just go watch the video. It'll really kind of sell this thing. It looks crazy. Honestly, I have written right here, Josh, I'm gonna read this because it's awesome. It's magic, it's magic. Now the last product that no one knew about, like literally the Microsoft employee in the room when they presented this didn't even know about this thing was the Microsoft Duo. And this little bad boy is the kid brother of the Surface Neo and also knows Kung Fu. In addition, it's a phone, baby. I know Jez Corden, like I could hear him screaming like a little girl from Germany. He was so excited about this. Windows phone users rejoice, for we now have the Surface phone that we've been waiting patiently for, for all these years. Now you might be asking yourself, Roby, didn't Microsoft already try to do phones that didn't catch on with the public? Well, yes, yes they did, but in the past, they would rather try and go their own way with Windows Mobile OS, which was really freaking good, by the way. Uh, I think uh, many of us would say, and a lot of people use that launcher on Android. But they are working together with Google and Android to run a hybrid OS between Windows 10X and Android so you can run Office and all of your favorite Android apps. Honestly, this is like Nirvana right now, when Microsoft and Google get together. It's like... Did that ever, was that ever gonna happen? Well, apparently we have it. Now it has the same 360 degree hinge, dual screen functionality, and is small enough to fit in your bag or giant pocket if you have really big pants, or like those cargo pants that have like big pants that like kind of went out of style in like 2016 and people just make fun of you for. Brian, my wife bought me those. Anyway, both the Neo and Duo are slated for holiday 2020 release with no pricing, but this is an, which is an unprecedented move by Microsoft to reveal a prototype at a Surface event. Honestly, it was funny because Panos goes, I have never done this before. Like he was surprised to do this. And I think there's another product, <coughs> Scarlet. <coughs> oh, oh, my uh, oh, throat, someone was caught in my throat there. That's <coughs> Scarlet. Anyway, he showed some cool Xbox stuff in there. I don't know. 2020 seems like a stacked year if you're into Surface and you're into Xbox. Now let's talk about Big Blue because Big Blue's been having a tough time from Team Red. If you don't know what Big Blue is, that's Intel. Team Red, that's AMD. 
well, how has Intel responded to all of this pressure from the good old folks at Ryzen with their Threadrippers and their AMD 3900Xs? That's right, they're slashing prices on their Core 10 processors. In response to an overwhelming offer from AMD, with Ryzen third gen CPUs being way cheaper than Intel's lineup, when you look at price per core, Intel is cutting its prices of its upcoming Cascade Lake X family of CPUs. Previously, the upper end i9 9980XE was priced at $1,979 for its 18 core 36 thread CPU. The 10980XE, wow, that's a mouthful to say. 10980XE, let's, can we just take a moment? Can, can we come up with like cooler names for processors? Like, uh, like, when, uh, like uh, I rant, I digress, anyway. This is what meant when they said we need competition, when we say competition is better for consumer, now we have a more competitive pricing for performance where Intel had a bit of a stranglehold on the high-end desktop CPU market. Now the 10980XE keeps the same three gigahertz clock speed, but can crank things up to 4.8 gigahertz in turbo mode when compared to the 9980XE from last year. That also makes the lower end of the Core X series a bit more attractive with 10 cores, 20 thread, 10900X coming in at $590 rather than the 10,000, sorry, 1,000, not 10,000, well, that'd be a really bad deal, the $1,020 of the 9900X. Now, while there's still a lot that can be done to improve upon the performance per dollar gap between AMD and Intel, this is definitely a step in the right direction. Now that affordable high core CPUs are going to be commonplace moving forward and gone are the days of four core, eight thread CPUs being the standard cheap chip. I mean, we're just gonna be throwing CPUs everywhere. It's like Oprah on the show. Here's cores for you. Here's cores for you. Everybody's got cores. I don't know why I said it like that, but it just felt like the right thing to do. Cores, more cores. You get a core, you get a core. <laughs> Let's talk about some game news. Number one, the game news I'm gonna cover, Microsoft Flight Simulator is massive. And I do mean massive. In a recent post on the Xbox Wire, something you should be checking, by the way, on a daily basis, we've got our hands-on review of where the game is at currently and how much Microsoft has upped the level of detail for the la latest iteration of the title. Now, here's the deal. If you have not seen this trailer, go back and watch the E3 2019 Microsoft Flight Sim trailer. It will blow your mind, and you need your mind blown and then some tissue to clean up the brain matter after your mind's blown. And we'll put a link to that in the description below. Announced at E3 2019, we're seeing that the world was created by Microsoft Flight Simulator is crazy huge and insanely detailed. Using a combination of satellite data and aerial imagery from Bing, the best search engine ever. You know, honestly, that is a really terrible idea because I know in the comments below, we're gonna get murdered for that, but I still believe in it. Don't at me, bruh. And the power of Azure's cloud, we have a beautiful rendition of the, you know, entire planet. A whopping two petabytes. Not to be confused with Pez, Brian. Petabytes. You can't eat a petabyte. But you can eat Pez. Stop eating Pez. It's, it's so weird how you like Pez. Anyway, uh, was used to create the world so visual flight rules or VFR can apply. Now, what is VFR, you might ask? Well, that means if you see a landmark, like a street, a mountain, and recognize it and navigate purely based on what you see. It is that detailed. In fact, the person in the article found their house while flying a plane in a video game. Brian, I wonder if we can find our house. Maybe we should buy a house so we can find it in a video game. That feels like a really good use of like, you know, three quarters of a million dollars. <laughs> Let's get a house and find it in a video game. Now, the per, uh, if you want to buzz the Space Needle, do it. You want to cruise over the Great Wall of China? Go right ahead. Dive under the Golden Great Bridge? Be my guest. In the video game. Don't do it in real life. That does not end well, by the way. This is only in Microsoft Flight Sim that you can do this. Now, the world detail goes even further than just the ground. Weather is realistic to each region from atmospherics like fog, smog, and clouds, and maybe, just maybe, double rainbows all the way across the sky yeah that's intense double rainbows yeah and the sky isn't just a visual it's going to affect the way your aircraft cuts through the skies because you know physics 
and it's a simulator. That'd be lame if it didn't have the effect. Now there are the, also the planes themselves, beautifully rendered in 4K, that's 4Ks, with accurately animated dials and gauges with the addition of an interactive pre-flight checklist. So those of you not familiar, which is pretty much most of you, uh, with everything that goes into getting a plane up and off the ground can take to the skies no matter what plane you decide to fly. Now Microsoft Flight Sim launches next year on Xbox Game Pass for, Game Pass for PC. If you wanna sign up for the Insider Program, which you're watching the director flair voice for Halo, who's telling you, please go help us test our games, head over to flightsimulator.com and sign up today. And we got one more, one more piece of news. Are you ready? Because we're almost to the end. And I know, I know that's hard for you, but cope. Just press F to pay respects because the show's almost over. But before it is, we're gonna talk about Xbox Game Pass Ultimate and Game Pass PC get Spotify Premium for free. Continuing with the Game Pass train, users that subscribe to Xbox Game Pass Ultimate or Game Pass for PC will get six months of Spotify Premium faux free. And I said faux, faux free. While the US and UK only, sorry Canada and the rest of the world, I don't know what's up with Canada. Like Canada doesn't get the xCloud, they didn't get like the Galaxy Fold. Like what's, is, did Canada do something to make anybody mad? Who's mad at Canada? Like who gets mad at Canada? They don't do anything. We love you, Canada. Here at Roby Tech, we love you. We let you, we let you enter our competitions. So there you go, there's that. Now right now, the cost upgrade to Ultimate from standard Game Pass is only a dollar. That's right, one dollar. Microsoft has one one dollar menu and it has one item and that's Game Pass Ultimate upgrade. That's easy, one, do it. Now, why are you watching this show? Oh, well, well, let's finish this though. So not only do you get to play all the latest and dopest games like Gears 5, you also get to listen to your favorite T-Swizzle songs. I have so many favorites. T-Swizzle, if you're watching right now, love you. Thank you. Anyway, thinking about T-Swizzle, I gotta just stop for now. So that's it for the tech news and game news for today. Be sure to come back next week. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and check out our daily show, our weekly show, Roby Tech, every Wednesday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. at mixer.com slash Roby1Kenobi. That's it. We out.